Okay, so um, thank you very much for get, give, giving me the opportunity to talk at this conference. So my uh, talk will be about new results uh, about Condorcet domains uh, and open questions. Okay, so uh, let's start. So uh, the plan of the talk is that uh, I will remind uh, firstly what a Condorcet domain and how they are defined by never conditions. Uh, then I will relate Condorcet domain to median graphs. Uh, then uh, I will talk about uh, generalization of black single peakedness, which is called arrow single peakedness. Uh, then I will talk about peak peak domains and their representation the styling domains and also sets of flags in arrangements of pseudo lines. Uh, then I will talk about symmetric domains. And finally, I will uh, talk about the quest for finding the largest possible Condorcet domains. And at the end, I will formulate uh, some uh, questions. I will formulate several questions in the process uh, of the talk as well. Okay, so uh, if we have just three, three alternatives, A, B, and C, let me start slowly, then uh, there are only six possible rankings uh, of these alternatives. Um, a, B, C, B, C, A, C, A, B, A, C, B, B, A, C, and C, B, A. And they can be split in two cyclic uh, profiles. Uh, so A, B, C, B, C, A, C, A, B. And each of them leads to a non-transitive majority relation. So in particular, uh, this group of three people will prefer A to B, two of them, and B to C, two of them, and C to A, two of them. So uh, the majority relation is uh, cyclic. <clears throat> and similar, uh, the other prof profile will give us <clears throat> a similar majority relation. So this is often called as a Condorcet uh, par paradox. Now, if we want not to run into this intransitivity problem, then apparently we have to somehow prohibit one order from each group. So at least four linear orders uh, are possible to have uh, in such a way that we don't run into intransitivity problem. Uh, so uh, in my talk, A will be uh, the set of uh, all possible alternatives. L of A will be set of all linear orders, which is sometimes called universal domain. And any subset of a universal domain uh, is called uh, a Condorcet domain. If every profile composed from preferences from D has a cyclic majority relation. Now, as I mentioned uh, uh, to get uh, to preclude intransitivity, we can remove one linear order from each group um, uh, on the previous page. And it appears that you can do it in three different ways. So you cannot understand uh, looking at these, what's the difference between them. But when we uh, draw the graphs of these domains, uh, then we will see the difference. So the permutahedron is a graph associated with a universal domain. And for three alternatives, this is a hexagon. Now, what are the neighboring <coughs> linear orders? Uh, in the permutahedron, neighboring linear orders uh, are connected by an edge if uh, they appear one from another by switch of neighboring alternatives. Um, <coughs> And uh, in the domain, uh, sometimes when we remove 
one alter one linear order, uh, then the neighboring linear orders will become uh, not uh, that of permutahedra. So our three domains, uh, the first domain uh, is uh, shown here, the second domain and the graph is a line, the second domain is graph is a, a rectangle and the third domain is also a graph is a line, but these two, the left and the right one are different. So if we uh, look at the, which two we prohibited here, we see that we prohibited two of them where B is ranked uh, first. So this uh, condition, it says B never first. So it means we are prohibiting to these orders. Now here we prohibited uh, two where A uh, was ranked second. So A never ranked second in Mang ABC. And here um, we prohibited uh, two uh, alternatives here, um, where B uh, is ranked uh, third. So this uh, is uh, the condition B never third. And uh, it's clear that <clears throat> for having a Condorcet domain on every triple, we must have uh, one of these conditions satisfied. So this is a very old observation. A word called it absence of Latin squares. Uh, Sen calls them value restrictions. Uh, Fishburn calls them never conditions and we uh, adopt uh, Fishburne's uh, terminology. So three different never conditions. We say this is never top, never middle, never bottom. Okay, so um, there is a special type of graphs that are closely related to Condorcet domains. And this group of graphs are called median graphs. What does this mean? So yeah. for every three for distinct every three, three distinct sorry. For every three distinct vertices here, A, B, and C, there is a unique uh, vertex M, which lies on the shortest path from B to C from A to B and from A to C. These uh, graphs, uh, well, examples of these graphs are trees and grid graphs. So eventually, um, effectively, any uh, uh, retract of an n-dimensional cube, that's a median graph. Okay, and uh, now, and there's a domain uh, we call it closed. Uh, if we talk a majority relation corresponding to any profile with odd number of orders, uh, it's again a linear order since it must be a cyclic. And uh, uh, the Condorcet domain is closed if majority relation of any profile with odd number of orders is again in D. Uh, and if uh, some majority relation is not in D, you can add it and get a larger Condorcet domain. So any maximal Condorcet domains are closed. And in 2019, uh, Clemens Pupi and myself, we showed that uh, any closed Condorcet domain associated graph uh, is a median graph. And on the other hand, any median graph can be obtained uh, for some uh, Condorcet domain. So this combinatorial object is related to any Condorcet domain without any uh, restrictions. Okay, so uh, let's talk about single figuredness now. Uh, a domain uh, is a domain of single peaked uh, preferences uh, in the classical sense if there exists a societal axis on a set of alternatives, 
say a1 a2 a m from left to right such that every um, order from the domain has a peak on this axis uh, and the further you go from the axis the less preferred alternative gets so here you can see three uh, examples of single peaked orders for this particular axis a b c d e and it appears that this is a maximal never bottom condensate domain so all triples satisfy the conditions uh, that uh, one of the alternatives is never last right but uh, another notice is that since um, uh, all uh, conditions are on triples then uh, the requirement of single pickedness can be imposed separately on each triple and the uh, societal axis as a whole may not exist the societal axis may be specific uh, for each of the triples and Renault, Renault uh, uh, called uh, these conditions arrow single peakedness. And arrow single peak domains are also Condorcet domains and also uh, they are never uh, bottom uh, domains. So this is, uh, in this talk, I will first discuss never bottom domains, then uh, I will add never top. So it will be uh, two conditions and then we will talk about never middle domains. Now, uh, the, what is the difference? Uh, what makes uh, arrow single peak domain and black single peak domain? It appears that uh, <clears throat> the requirement that is missing in the definition of arrow single peak domains is two completely reversed orders, in which case, uh, we say that the domain has a maximal width. So if you have a row single peak domain to completely reverse order, that's exactly uh, Black's single peakiness. So this is a graph of uh, maximal domain, which is Black's single peak domain on four alternatives. Uh, here you have B never last, B never last, C never last, C never last. So all never last conditions. Uh, however, there is another uh, arrow single peak domain on four alternatives. Uh, here is a graph of it. And it's also B never last, B never last, the third time B never last, and finally uh, C never last. So slight change of never conditions. And you see this uh, A, B, C, D in D, B, C, A, they are not completely reversed. There is no pair of completely reversed uh, orders here. If we go to five alternatives, then we will have six different uh, up to an isomorphism domains. So here it's just one of them, which is especially particularly nice uh, symmetric picture. And um, uh, I showed that uh, up to an isomorphism, there are six maximal arrow single peak domains on the set of five alternatives, all classified. Our PhD student, Georgina Liversidge, in yet unpublished papers, calculated the number of arrow single peak Condorcet domains on M alternatives up to M equals to eight, and uh, as I said, for five alternative, you have six, for six, you have 40, and for eight, you have already 17,024. Uh, and one, uh, the first problem, uh, which I uh, pose, take your favorite theorem about black single peak domains or profiles and prove it for arrow single peak. I'm sure in 90% in of the cases, it will work. Okay, so um, let's add another uh, another never condition. So 
we had uh, each triple satisfying uh, never last condition, but now uh, we allow uh, the domain uh, that some triple satisfy never last and some uh, satisfy never first. Um, and we will assume now that uh, the domain has two completely reversed orders. And up to an isomorphism, we may think that A, our set is one, two up to N and completely reversed orders is one, two uh, up to N and completely reversed N, N minus one and two, one at the end. Now, Danilov, Karzanov and Kershevoy uh, in a very uh, important paper called the domain P peak P domains if every triple satisfies either never top or never bottom condition. And among these, the most attention was attracted to Fishburne's domains. We call them Fn and Fn bar, uh, they are flip isomorphic. And they are defined by alternating scheme uh, that Fishburne call alternating scheme domains. We call them Fishburne domains. If you have a triple <coughs> i less than j less than k, then j is never last if j is even, and it's never first if j is odd. And for flip isomorphic domain, it's, it's the other way around. The history of these domains are as follows. F6 uh, with 45 orders was constructed by Monjardin. And she didn't publish, he didn't publish it, but communicated to Peter Fishburn. And he uh, generalized this uh, example uh, to arbitrary n. And as we will see, uh, for some small values, these are the largest uh, domains that exist. Uh, well, uh, Galambos and Reiner calculated exactly uh, the size of this domain, and you see it grows as about n times two to the power of n approximately. Uh, I forgot to say that all arrows in the peak domains, maximal ones, have cardinality two to the power of n minus one, fixed cardinality, but this is larger because it's uh, also in, right? Now, <clears throat> as the first uh, three, 13 values of Fn are listed in this table and up to seven, uh, we have, it's proved that Fishburne's domain are the largest possible as there is no larger Condorcet domain. For eight, it's a little bit contentious because there are uh, claims uh, that uh, from uh, Charles Liedem Green that um, they managed to find a Condorcet domain with 224 orders, but we haven't seen any uh, proofs uh, or whatever. So this is uh, under uh, investigation. Okay, well, this is uh, uh, this is a Condorcet domain, sorry, a Fishburne domain for four alternatives. So this is its median graph. And what is here? Let me explain to you. This is a rhombus tiling. So you have sink, a source in the sink, and every snake from uh, source to sink is uh, correspond to correspond to a, a linear order in the Fishburne domain. Now, for example, so that each color has a, a, a number, say brown is one, uh, red is two, uh, three is green and uh, blue is four. So for example, if I uh, take a red line from to start with, that will be two, four, uh, then one, three. So this is linear order two, four, one, three. Okay, this is one uh, representation of uh, 
peak feed condensate domains. Another one is uh, through arrangements of pseudo lines. Uh, so here on the left, you have one, two, three, four. On the right, you have four, three, two, one. And uh, uh, one on the left and one on the right is joined by line one. Uh, it's not straight, that's why it's called pseudo line. And now line two and line three and line four. Now what happens? Now we have chambers. Now this chamber upstairs have, the, uh, have empty uh, label. Now this um, chamber has label one because only uh, first line goes above it. And this uh, has label two because only uh, line two goes above. This is uh, his label four, but this, lay, uh, this chamber has labels two and four because uh, line two goes above and line four goes above. This has one to four because only line three goes below and lines one, two, and four goes above. And now if we uh, consider a flag in this arrangement, say, well, uh, going from uh, this way, uh, then we first meet four on the way, then we meet two, then we meet one, and then three, finally. So this corresponds to a linear order four, two, one, three. Now, flags in this arrangements of pseudo lines correspond exactly to uh, Fishburne's uh, domain. Now, this is not surprising because uh, uh, rhombus stylings uh, and arrangements of pseudo lines are two dual combinatorial objects. Uh, so this picture shows us the duality. Uh, so we uh, can move from this star to uh, chambers. And then we can uh, take a homeomorphism. And so effectively, eventually, this will become a rhombus tiny. OK, that's why we have two types of representations. And in that important paper, Daniel karzanov Peshevoy showed that the class of maximal peak peak domains of maximal widths correspond, coincides exactly with the class of tiling domains and domains obtained from arrangements of pseudo lines. Now, uh, we, uh, together with um, my PhD student uh, Lee and the Clemens, we uh, classified up to an isomorphism and flip isomorphism, uh, maximal condorcepic peak pit domains of maximal widths. And we found exactly 18 of them for five alternatives. And that's the sizes of domains uh, that we have found. So the smallest is 11. Uh, the largest, uh, that's actually single crossing domain. The largest is uh, 20, uh, that's Fishburne domain. <clears throat> and here are the sizes uh, of uh, domains. For 12, you have five. For 13, there are none, and so on and so on. Uh, this complies with computational results by Tobias Dietrich. Uh, who in his unpublished uh, PhD uh, listed uh, all maximal uh, Condorcet domains up to uh, uh, five uh, alternatives. Uh, but uh, it's good to have um, uh, it done by a slightly different theoretical uh, means. Now, let's moved now to symmetric domains, which are never middle domains. So now we um, assume that only uh, never middle conditions um, uh, are present. And um, it, uh, what is symmetric domain? It means that with any order x1, x2, xn, it also contains order xn, uh, x2, x1. So it's possible to prove that 
peak pit domains have only one completely reversed order, but here every order is uh, can has uh, reversed con counterpart. And symmetric domains are exactly never middle domains. For them, there is a very nice operation of composition. If you have domains D1 and D2 on A1 and A2, uh, then you can concatenate uh, any linear order from D1 and linear order in D2 first in this order and then in the opposite order. And you again uh, get uh, a Condorcet symmetric domain, which is maximal if D1 and D2 were maximal. So uh, this forces us to uh, look at uh, indecomposable maximal Condorcet domains uh, because uh, decomposable are quite uh, uh, clear. Um, now, firstly, uh, uh, it's an interesting situation. Danilov and Kashevoy in a different paper proved that all maximal symmetric domains have cardinality two to the power of n minus one, exactly like uh, arrow single peak. However, these maximal are all decomposable. So this is trivial. A1 is a trivial uh, domain on single alternative. A2 and AN are the same. So you can compose them uh, uh, introducing some bracket arrangements on this product and you will get a maximal symmetric under said domain. They are all decomposable. What about indecomposable? Now, let's consider the following small domain of four, alter, four orders. Uh, e, uh, E bar, X, e, X bar. So E is a kind of up to an isomorphism. We can consider that one linear order is one, two up to N. So it depends only on X because X bar is completely reversed of X. And uh, Renault in 1981 uh, discovered the following con configuration, uh, which is K, uh, one, two, three, four, two, four, one, three. He called it configuration K. And he proved that it is a, an indecomposable and maximal Condorcet domain. Right, so uh, we, uh, in, this, in, this, in our paper, we call such domains Reno domains. Danilov and Kashevoy in uh, uh, already mentioned paper uh, gave uh, X for any N, for any N, they created X, which produces uh, indecomposable maximal Condorcet domain. So this is uh, uh, this X, right? Where um, if N is uh, odd, uh, then 2K, uh, this is 2K plus one. If uh, N is even, then this is 2K minus one. And with Karpov, we proved uh, uh, the following uh, theorem that this uh, four uh, linear order uh, domain is indecomposable maximal domain if and only if X is a simple sequence. In combinatorics, simple sequences are quite uh, well-known objects. These are sequences without intervals. And in uh, social uh, theory uh, terms, uh, we can say that uh, this K does not have non-trivial clone sets. So in particular here, two, four, one, three has no intervals because two, four doesn't form an interval because three is outside. One, three isn't an interval because two is outside. Two, four, one is not an interval because three is missing. Four, one, three is not an interval because two is missing. So, and it's a 
intriguing question. Do there exist non-trivial and decomposable maximal condensate domains beyond Raynaud domains? That we don't know. Now, um, uh, it, the uh, question of what is the size of the largest Condorcet domain uh, was uh, always of interest, has been always of interest to researchers, especially F F F Peter Fishburn spent a lot of time on this question. So, but uh, we think that it's uh, interesting to uh, pose this question in three different classes. So among all domains, Condorcet domains, we call it uh, maximal cardinality f of n. Among all p, p domains of maximal width g of n, and among uh, all p p domains of n alternatives without condition of maximal width h of n. So it is known that up to n equals to seven, all these three functions coincide. But uh, Fishburne showed uh, that f of 16 is, uh, okay, so let me not jump. Uh, <clears throat> Monjardet uh, in his survey suggested that g of 16 must be smaller than f of 16. So what's, is there a difference between these two functions? Um, Monjardet su suggested that g 16 will be smaller. Why did he think so? Firstly, Fishburne showed that f of 16 is greater than the cardinality of Fishburne domain for 16 alternatives. And uh, a hypothesis which Monjardet believed that Fishburne domains provide the largest uh, domains in the class of peak p domains of maximum width. However, this appears to be not true uh, Danilov and Kashevoy uh, showed that G42 is greater than cardinality of Fishburne domain for 42 alternatives. And uh, with Karpov uh, using computational uh, methods, uh, we eventually proved that even for G of 34 is greater than cardinality of Fishburne domain on 34 alternatives, and it is very close to the lower bound. So maybe uh, you can do it for 33 or 34, but no smaller. And the problems, old problem remains. Is it true that G of N is smaller than F of N for large N? That's not known at this point. Now, uh, Arkady, um, Arkady, I'm sorry to interrupt. I mean, we, we are like six or seven minutes to, uh, to the end, and I would like to leave some time for questions. So can you perhaps wrap up in one or two minutes so that we have time for questions? I, I have mean, just your, one your presentation. I have Say one slide. I have one slide left. Yes. Okay. Is it, okay, go ahead. But yeah. <laughs> Well, if you like, I can skip it. Uh, for large no, N, I mean, the, 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 yes, go the, the following bounds uh, are known. So G of N is greater than 2.0767 uh, to the power of N. It was announced uh, in the paper by Felschner and Walter uh, that Andre Bilka proved it, but it was unpublished. And uh, with Karpov, we confirmed uh, this bound exactly. We got the same bound, but with proof. Now, for H of n, uh, the bound is slightly larger. For F of n, it's larger again, and it improves Fishburne bound. Now, the upper bounds are less developed uh, from uh, some combinatorial results related to uh, arrangements of pseudo lines we have this uh, bound for g of n and for f of n we have only bound c to the power of n for some uh, c uh, we don't know so uh, we uh, may we have some better upper bound please if possible now the following uh, questions 
I think deserve um, further consideration. Firstly, combinatorial representation of peak P domains without assumption of maximal widths. Very interesting. The structure of maximal Condorcet domains where every triple satisfies either never bottom or never middle condition and classification of strategy proof voting rules on Condorcet domains. That's a separate big topic. Uh, and uh, this is done uh, by uh, Molen uh, on, for uh, single peak preferences and separity for single crossing preferences. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Arkady. I mean, it's difficult to convey the applause, but it was a very impressive talk. Uh, let me say that, you know, you, you mentioned so many fascinating and challenging results. Uh, we need to invite you again for three or four hours so that you explain some of the arguments. For instance, uh, you know, a very simple argument that you made, uh, it sounded obvious to you, but uh, not to me in particular. You said that the symmetric domains are the never middle and you you announced it as something obvious but is it can you explain somebody slow like me why the symmetric domains are the never middle um, <clears throat> so if you uh, if you if you take a triple um, say um, uh, one one triple one two three for example then in two linear orders, it will be one, two, three, three to one. But then if you add another pair of completely reversed orders, you will see uh, that uh, all three alternatives uh, happen on the top and also on the bottom. Hmm. So that's one direction that they must be never middle. Is yes. That, is that correct? I mean, if it's symmetric, it must be never middle, and then you have to also do the converse, which maybe is a bit more difficult. I mean, it's yes. not important. It's just, just a, yeah, just a sense. Uh, I, I have one quick question, and maybe then there will be others, but um, when you said, uh, I bet you that for, you take any type of result you have for your black single peak domain, and you can apply it also to the arrow single peak domain, what kind of results did you have in mind? Uh, of course, it, you were not thinking of strategy proofness because, okay, it works, and it, you said at the end it has to be studied in those other domains, but what kind of results do you, did you have in mind at that point? I mean, <laughs> your favorite. <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, firstly, uh, uh, for example, um, algorithmic. Uh, results would be interesting. For example, take um, one of the uh, voting rules uh, that are, are in general NP uh, hard, but on uh, single peak domains become uh, polynomial time uh, and uh, okay. try to see how this uh, voting rule behaves on uh, arrow single peak domains. Okay, okay, thank you. A a any other questions? I mean, can I? Alexander, did Salvador, you can I? Yes, go ahead. Hi, hello. Oh, works. The technology works well, it's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this is an impressive list of works. And I wanted to, to comment on a paper by Ballester and Herringer in. Uh, in, in Social Choice and Welfare 2010, where they, you know, they take this uh, necessary triple condition that uh, for single pickedness and then find the necessary condition which closes the gap, uh, where, uh, which instead of being a, a three alternative uh, condition, it's a, a, a three person condition. It, it's a two-person condition over at least four alternatives. I don't know whether you are familiar with this result, which I found very stimulating, but the, my question is, 
because this is completely different. Uh, it's a non-geometric approach, uh, whether your uh, analysis can be translated in other languages other than graph theory, and in particular, whether this one would fall into your line of interest. Well, uh, in uh, my paper uh, of 2019, uh, 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 this uh, condition of uh, which you mentioned of uh, that paper were implied from the results that I obtained there. Uh, and it's, um, uh, and, they, and also, uh, Puppe, uh, Clemens Puppe criterion, they both uh, are consequences of, uh, of my uh, result there. Yeah, but technically they are completely different treatments, aren't they? Yes, but uh, they are uh, both are con uh, uh, corollaries to uh, my result. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll have to look at that one. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so if there are no further, oh, there is a hand over there. I'm sorry, I cannot read very well <laughs> your name. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, the idea of uh, the negative conditions is very interesting. What I want to ask, oh, that's I understand it with, uh, with, with three alternatives, it is sufficient to add one negative condition to make it a Condorcet domain. So my question is, suppose you have n alternatives, how many conditions do you have to add in order to make it a Condorcet domain? Or is there a an algorithm to choose a minimal set of level conditions to make it a Condorcet domain? One for every triple. So for every triple, if I add one condition, I get a Condorcet domain always? Yep. Okay, thanks. Okay, well, um, thank you. Thank you very much, Arkady. That was a very good start. Mm -hmm.